Hey guys, Mrs. Groff here. Uh, today we're going to talk about the word texture. And the word texture is uh, the way something feels. So I've collected a bunch of really pretty fall leaves. And besides feeling them, we're also going to take note of what they have in common and things that are different. Here's two that are almost the same shape. They have the same number of uh, little pokey things, but the colors are different. The size is a little different. Okay, this one's red like this one, but it's got a very different shape to it, right? A lot more edges poking out. And this little oak leaf, this is my tiny guy. Got a really cool shape to him and he's small. So we've got a lot of differences here, size, shape, color, and um, also the texture. So you'll notice with leaves, one side is really bumpy and the other side's smoother. So if you guys have some leaves you can collect for this project, that would be ideal. And take note of which side is the bumpiest. Um, if you don't have leaves, you can do it with other objects like coins, Got a key, bottom of my shoe. So I'll demonstrate that stuff in a little bit. But if you have leaves, that's the best. You'll need a piece of paper and a paperless crayon. So uh, ask permission if you can have a crayon to peel the paper off. I've got a nice thick black one because it's easier to hold. All right, so we're gonna make kind of a collage of leaf rubbings, all right? And what you do is you find the bumpiest side. So here's the smooth side, here's the bumpy side. Bumpy side facing up smooth sides touching the table. And I'm gonna put my paper on top. Okay, I'm feeling where the leaf is, so I don't need to color over here because there's nothing there except my table. And I'm gonna put the crayon laying flat right over top of my leaf. One hand holds the paper tight. The other hand pinches the crayon. So I'm using pointer and thumb, my pincher fingers. Pinching it really hard. And slowly but pressing hard, I'm gonna start rubbing the paper. Sometimes turning the crayon different ways, up and down, side to side, works best. And you'll start to see the shape of the leaf emerge. Okay, and the reason that's working is because the leaf has this bumpy texture and it shows up. Once you've got the basic shape, you can push that one out of the way, grab a different one, find another spot. Now you can use a lot of different colors or you can do the way I'm doing where I'm just using my black crayon because when I'm done, I'm gonna add some watercolor over top. You can add the color however you think will look good. And that's a really pretty one. You can really see all the fine, tiny little veins popping up there. Awesome. And you can use a bigger paper. I just had a little scrap here. Okay, we'll get this guy over here. I like to let them overlap on my paper just kind of reminds me of a big leaf pile. With all the mixing and matching there. Okay. So don't be discouraged if the first time you try this, um, you don't get a good rubbing. Sometimes standing up helps, but it is tricky the first time you've done it. Uh, now, if you didn't have leaves, or maybe you just want to try some other things too, coins will work. Oop. It wiggles around though. It's a little harder. Okay, you can try a key. That's kind of cool. You can do your shoe tread. Maybe you've got some bumpy walls or bumpy floors. Uh, go outside, find a tree bark, the branch of a tree, um, or the trunk would be cool. So once you're done, um, you can stop there, especially if you've added color. Or maybe you would like to um, add some color with paint. And this is fun because if you've used a crayon, the wax from the crayon um, repels the paint, so it still will show through. So uh, if you have a set of watercolors, that's great. You need a cup of water and a brush and your paints. You can get these at the dollar store or Walmart, Target. They're like a dollar or two. Um, and just pick the color you want with your wet brush. So you have to use water first. And then I like to swipe it gently over my paint and count to about 10. Okay, my brush is still having a good hair day. I'm not pushing so hard that the bristles are going crazy. And then pick the spot you wanna paint and just gently paint on top. 
and the paint mostly sticks to the part of the paper that's white. I think it looks really pretty. So you can paint inside your leaves, you can just kind of paint over the whole thing. Now when you switch colors, you gotta clean your brush or you'll get the orange on your other colors. So I like to tap it gently in my water. You can see the orange coming out. Okay, once I've done that for about 10 seconds, I'm gonna wipe, wipe, and I'm ready for my next color. Maybe I'll do green on this one. When it starts to dry up, you can go back and get a little bit more paint. You might need to get more water first. Depending on what kind of paints you have, you have to use a lot of water. And sometimes you have to rub the paints for like 20 seconds. So I hold the paintbrush the same way I hold a pencil. And if I'm painting a big space, I like to use the side of the brush. If you're trying to paint a tiny space, you would hold it up and just use the very tip of the brush right there. Okay. All right. So here's one that I did some time ago where I just mainly used warm colors to get that fall feel. But yeah, just have fun with it. You can use any colors you want. And I cannot wait to see your texture rubbings and paint if you choose to paint. All right, have fun.